how did you get to be interested in this, and what convinced you to leave a, what I'm assuming was a very cushy job at BP? They have a lot of money um, there, don't they? That's, that's, uh, and that's exactly right, Michael. It's funny. When I was at BP, people always asked me. I had a different background than most folks at BP, so they always asked, well, John, what, what was it like being in startups? And I used to explain to them, you know, the big difference is in startups, I spent most of my time begging for money. Inside of BP, uh, you don't have to beg for money. It's actually interesting. Uh, but, you know, there's, a, there's actually a, an interesting way to relate to it because the folks that have grew up inside BP, they used to complain that BP asked for extensive business cases to allocate capital. And I thought, you know, compared to trying to convince a VC to give you capital, doing a business case inside of a big corporation like BP is actually pretty easy. Convincing them to allocate <laughs> capital isn't that hard. So to me, that's kind of the, uh, the big difference uh, is, uh, you know, I don't have to beg for capital inside, didn't have to beg for capital inside of BP. Uh, what attracted me to leave BP was uh, John Brown had a lot of influence on my thinking uh, about the environment. And John had a very simple perspective on this. John's view was, you know, uh, we could debate climate change all day long. And the reality is, from his perspective, uh, it's not like there's a completely uh, um, underpinned case for climate change. I mean, the facts aren't all clear. However, this is one argument he wouldn't want to be on the wrong side of. <laughs> and, you know, for me, that had a big impact. It's kind of like, so if you really, if you think there's a shot that climate change is for real, why wouldn't you want to do your part to make a difference? And that, to me, was, you know, as simplistic as it sounds, the most compelling argument. It's really easy. And today, you know, my, my kids, uh, you know, it's amazing how my 10-year-old is more focused on doing the right thing than I know I've ever been, right? So you think about that and you say, there is something happening here, and I don't want to be on the wrong side of it. Uh, and this became kind of an interesting opportunity to make a difference, even though the difference initially, when I left BP, I, I did not know whether or not there was a fuels business here or whether or not it was a fuels business that was worth chasing. It wasn't even part of it. It really, it really uh, comes down to three things that drove me to join Amaris. Uh, one was the founders and the people at Amherst. It really blew me away where I, I, could, I could walk through a company and to an employee, there wasn't one person who didn't have a common purpose for being in that building. And that is completely unlike anything I experienced at BP. Uh, you know, at BP, there, there was, a, there was a, uh, a category or a segment of people inside BP that were there because they were on the edge of 50. And that's kind of the worst environment you can work in. So to have a company where everybody in that company had a purpose and it was a common purpose, I found very, very compelling. I think the second thing was uh, the founders and the investors. Uh, it was a fantastic set of investors, and the founders convinced me that they were in it for the right reasons. I mean, they, they didn't even think about an IPO. They didn't even think about valuation. I mean, their whole focus was, we're here to do great science, and we can make a difference with it. And that was extremely compelling. Uh, and the third thing was uh, I was very... Uh, motivated or excited about the technology. I mean, I'm, I'm a technologist at heart, even though I'm not a scientist or a, a chemist. Uh, however, uh, technology and the opportunity to really change the world through technology has always been a key driver of the things I've done in life, and this, this was definitely in the sweet spot.